pre-match rituals. I don't have anything special, you know, obviously just eat good. Um, I like listening to music that's upbeat. Um, sometimes I go for gospel, but sometimes more, more, more time I go for music that's upbeat, you know, that makes me relax, happy, and I'm excited. Ah, let's check. <laughs> Let's check, because I listen to a lot of music, I listen to too much music, let's see, so, my top 25, there's a lot of gospel in here, there's a lot of gospel, 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 some Ghana, people know it's Ghana, Ghana, a lot of Ghana, Pot of Paper, he's my, he's my favourite artist for, for right now. Put a paper. You can see he's my favorite artist. So yeah, that's about it. Anything, anything that's too heavy, I try to avoid. Um, so anything that's too heavy, I like to eat something light before match day. Um, so like chicken, a bit of pasta, not too much pasta. Maybe a bit of rice because I like rice to be fair. Um, but yeah, I try not to eat too heavy. Hi, my name is Everest Trostakong, and I'm uh, William Trostakong's younger brother. Yeah. So, so. Uh, what's what's it like when you guys are home, or probably the family goes to the stadium to watch him play, and all of a sudden there's a tackle, is screaming on the ground. How do you guys react? Uh, yeah, it's it's, um, it's often painful to watch him being tackled of course I mean, it's, uh, it's a physical thing but also for the emotional guess, attachment to what, uh, what he's feeling um, yeah it's of course always great to see him play it's a really exciting moment for the family too he's representing the biggest country in, you know or the best country I would say um, so yeah it's very proud of him uh, and of course Bob, yeah, when he gets tackled it's, uh, it's painful to watch when you guys play at home Take, talk us through when you guys are at home playing, maybe it's computer game, or you guys are talking. Do you ever get to the place where you say, don't worry, I can dribble you, I can, I, I play better than you, that kind of stuff? No, of course. We, uh, <clears throat> so we used to play football a lot together. Uh, since we were kids, we used to play every day for like hours and hours and hours. And uh, yeah, we spent all the time, a lot of time playing football together. So, of course, I mean, he's, he's professional now, but uh, maybe I'm a better dribbler. <laughs> okay, so one day I'll be in pitch. One day I'll be in pitch. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. And 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 talk me through through angry days at home. Uh, I don't actually think he has many angry days. He's pretty level-headed, so I'd say he's uh, very capable of, of keeping his emotions uh, kind of under control. So on a very good day, he's of course happy. Uh, when he goes not as well, so maybe lose the game, for example. He's, he's pretty good at like internalizing it and keeping it together. So I'd say he's, um, you wouldn't actually feel that he's angry. He's just processing it within himself. Yes. So one of the most difficult things that people go through currently around the sporting world is how social media can rip into you without respect for your age, your personality, what you're going through. Nobody wants to know one bad game and everybody's coming down on you. And you have a smartphone, it means that you're on social media. When you, as a brother, you know what your brother is going through, you know what life is going through for him, and people ripping through them on social media. What's your go-to What's your go -to action? Um, I mean, the thing is, I don't actually have a... So, I don't think it's, it's, it's necessary to, uh, to go after people that make comments online. I think people all have an opinion, and people are very passionate about football, you know, when it goes good, when it goes bad. And so I think it's 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 part of what you kind of sign up as a footballer. And unfortunately, if people get angry, it's just part of it. But I think you also have to understand that it, it comes from a place of like passion as opposed to don't hate you. They're just very passionate about the sport and they're just maybe upset by the fact that you lost, for example. So it's um you to, you can you can read it, but you don't try to like take it in too much. You kind of let it go. You know, on to the next match and focus in the future, don't worry too much about what's going on. Okay, so before I let you go, I, you know, trust is your brother, but you know, we have this, he could have played for any other country. When that time, that decision to play for Nigeria came, these guys sit on the round table and decide, choose Nigeria, is, Nigeria is it, or 
uh, I don't know where to go and you guys were Oh no no it's always been it's been so we've been coming to Nigeria since we were kids every very often you know so many times and for us Nigeria's always been home so for us it was Lagos um, and so when the decision or the opportunity came to play for Super Eagles it was it was an immediate yes there's there no questions about it um, so yeah it's uh, it was an obvious decision when at home what do you what language do you guys speak pidgin english uh, no we speak dutch 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 so but you but, but you guys like pidgin english does pidgin english come out of the conversation uh, what are the few pidgin english words you've picked pidgin well so we, we speak i mean if we're in nigeria we can speak pidgin english to people but we grew up in amsterdam yeah. and so in our household we speak dutch uh, but when we're in nigeria we speak pidgin to people yeah. thank you very much no Uh, let me, uh, <laughs> what's the expectation for Nigeria on Tuesday? <laughs> so, 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 name three players on Nigeria. I don't even know. Sir. But you want to watch the match? Yes. Okay, good. All right. So, from the game at the Babayara Sports Stadium, well, you know, it was it actually was tough. From the onset, it was looking like it's going to be a tough game. You saw the Ghanaian, the fans, how they welcomed the Super Eagles. So, but at the end of the day, uh, I must say kudos to the Ghanaian team. They, they did well in the game. The first 30 minutes, they, they were all out on the Super Eagles. But uh, you might want to say at the end of the day, a draw might be uh, a favorable result, even though I wish we, we could have scored one at the Babayara Sports Stadium, you know, getting into the Abuja National Stadium for the reverse fixture. But, you know, a draw at the end of the day was a good result. And uh, for the game in Nigeria, in Abuja precisely, I would love to see uh, the manager make one or two changes. You know, we saw in the game uh, a lot of players were not at their best on the day. I don't want to start calling names. Maybe, you know, the likes of uh, Kilichi and actually wasn't in the game as well. You know, Aribo maybe doing too much. Maybe he needs that room to go further up the pitch. So I would like to see a little tweak from the manager. And from what we are seeing today in training, that might just be possible. It might just be happening, you know, in the game, in the reverse fixture here in Abuja. So yeah, the preferred line of the back four for me remains the same. Uh, the midfield, maybe that's where the change might come. Maybe uh, the manager might just bring an element of surprise, you know, that bit of uh, unpredictability. But, you know, it's a huge call. It's a crucial game, so the manager might still want to stick to the players they know and the players that he's familiar with. So, but for me personally, I'd like to see one or two tweaks in that uh, midfield and uh, maybe maybe the attacking positions as well. You could see Osime was trying to do a lot in that game. The services were not coming in for him. So, you know, that's just what I feel uh, the team, the technical crew, should do ahead of that reverse fixture here at the National Stadium.